If you've watched some of my other videos, there's a good chance that you've seen this old girl, my 1968 Triumph T100C. And actually my first video ever made on this channel was about why you should get a vintage motorcycle. So when you see this one, remember that there are good reasons to pick a vintage bike over a new one. Lots of good reasons. So check out that video as well. I'll put a link in the description and a card will pop up. But having owned an old bike for a while now, I can say that there are some good reasons not to go this route, especially for different people. So today I'm bringing you 10 reasons why you shouldn't get a vintage motorcycle. Also remember when I'm saying vintage, I mainly mean bikes from the 70s and earlier. Technically a 90s bike is vintage at this point, but you know a 90s bike won't have a lot of the problems that the bikes that I'm talking about have. Though you can apply a lot of these things to a pre-2000 bike. I'm thinking more bikes from like the 60s and the 70s and sometimes even earlier. Anyways, let's jump in. First on our list is safety. There's no getting around the fact that old bikes, like this old Triumph that I have, simply are not as safe as modern motorcycles, whether you're talking about basic things like ABS or traction control, all the way up to the way tires work today, or advanced modern technology like cornering ABS or wheelie control. Not that you need wheelie control on this bike. Many modern motorcycles that would cost you the equivalent of this bike would come with really decent safety technology, and depending on what you're doing, those bikes are going to be significantly safer. Safer, there's no getting around the fact that things like ABS simply do save lives. Even the most skilled, advanced riders can be saved by ABS. Now, if you're just wanting something to go around town on, then that extra measure of safety may be something that is not as important to you, but that's certainly something that you lose when you buy an old motorcycle. Okay, this one has to be mentioned as vehicles in general have moved on from carburetors. Cars did quite a bit earlier than motorcycles, but all new motorcycles at this point, for the most part, use modern fuel injection, and it's simply easier, more reliable, and just better for, you know, normal riding. Some old timers will tell you that carburetors are better, and sure, there could be applications where carburation is better, but for the most part, carburetors can be a pain in the butt. I would recommend if you are gonna get an old motorcycle, try to get one that has a single carb on it, as it's much easier for tuning your bike than messing around with two or even four. Tuning carburetors is really an art form. It does take a little bit to master. If you're okay with that learning curve, then that's fine. But remember, if you're buying an older motorcycle, you are gonna have to probably deal with carburation and it can be frustrating. Number eight is just general reliability, and this one hits home for me as just a few days ago, I had my first experience breaking down on the side of the road on my Triumph. Now, if I had remembered to bring fuses with me, I would have been able to get this thing running and get home. So being prepared is really the key with old bikes, and I will say if your bike is set up properly and tuned properly, there's really no reason that it's just gonna break down all the time. And an old bike can also be running like crap and still kind of keep running, whereas new motorcycles just tend to shut off the second something goes wrong. But in general, of course, older bikes are less reliable than new ones, and if you are needing like a daily commuter, I would strongly suggest that you just go get a new bike, you know, and save up for an old bike or have an old bike on the side if you can afford it. There's nothing wrong with having two motorcycles. And honestly, even like a Grom will get you where you need to go at almost the same speed, so you don't have to spend a bunch of money to get something that will basically get you where you need to be all the time. If you need something that just turns on perfectly every time, no matter the weather, getting like a modern Japanese bike is probably going to be the route to go. Now this one could fit into the safety category, but I want to mention it separately as it's so glaring. The brakes on old motorcycles are just not very good. Let me say that a different way. They're abysmal. Now a mid-70s Japanese bike is going to have twice as much stopping power as say an older British bike, like the one that I'm using which uses all drum brakes, but it's still nothing compared to a modern motorcycle with disc brakes, and this really is something you have to get used to. You need to give yourself more space between whatever is in front of you, and you need to be aware of potential hazards, like hyper aware of people just pulling out, because these bikes just don't stop the same way. They just kind of slow down. <laughs> now it is true that old bikes do hold their value a bit better and often way better than brand new bikes, but reselling an old motorcycle can be a bit of a hassle as there's just less people in general looking for your specific classic bike. So reselling can take a bit more time. You may have to be willing to deliver or ship it to an enthusiast of, like across the country, but as long as that's not a huge bother to you, then this isn't you know a huge factor. And like I said, motorcycles that are old do hold their value better. This is one of the points I make in my video on why 
you should get one. So yeah, reselling can take a little bit more time, but generally you will like get more money out of your bike relative to what you paid for it than if you had a new motorcycle. All right, number five, titling and registering your bike. Basically getting your bike on the road legally. One of the biggest things to look out for with any motorcycle, but especially old bikes, is whether they have correctly titled and registered it like to the current owner. I made the mistake of buying a cheap old motorcycle one time that was not titled in the owner's name. And don't listen to those people who say it's not a big deal. They're wrong. The bike needs to be titled into their name. Otherwise you will not be able to register it into your name. But even more than that, some states have very specific requirements for titling and registering old vehicles. Here in Hawaii, for example, I had to get my VIN verified. I had to get my bike weighed at a quarry. I had to go get multiple safety checks. It was a nightmare. It took me like weeks to get all of it done. Some states are much easier, like my dad bought an old Honda in Iowa and he literally just went to the DMV and exchanged it and got a title. It was no big deal. But be on the lookout for bikes with no titles or incorrect titles and remember, it could be a bit more work to get your bike legally on the road. Okay, let's talk about performance a bit. Modern motorcycles are generally lighter and faster than old motorcycles. There's no denying that. We've come a long way with performance being able to make power out of specific sized engines and especially weight reduction. But I have talked at length, however, about how modern classic motorcycles like many of the Bonnevilles and Royal Enfields basically aren't that much faster or sometimes even are slower than classic motorcycles. But in general, modern motorcycles are faster. And you might find that an old motorcycle just doesn't have that punch that you need going on the highway, for example, if you're gonna do any touring. Unless you're using something like, you know, an 80s Goldwing or like a Honda CB750, you might have a bit of trouble keeping up and it might not even be safe to go out on the highway on a lot of these old bikes. Again, all this depends on what you specifically are looking for out of a motorcycle. If you're just going to be on like B roads or around town, then a vintage motorcycle is a great option. But if you need that extra bit of performance, if you need to pass people, you might find that an old motorcycle is a bit lacking. All right, number three, we have vibration. That's right, old motorcycles in general vibrate quite a bit more than modern bikes. On my bike, you can feel it in your feet, you can feel it in your butt, you can feel it at the handlebars. It's just a vibey old thing. And for me, it works. I love that because I'm normally not riding for hours on end. But if you want to do any touring or, you know, riding for any long period of time, this could get annoying. Again, this all depends on what type of old bike you're getting. But still, even a Japanese bike from like the 70s is going to feel quite a bit rougher than a Japanese bike from today. You know, cheap suspension today is better than expensive suspension 50 years ago. Again, just riding around town, going on short rides for the weekends. It's fun, you can call that character, right? But if you're gonna be riding quite a bit, that character that the bike has could get annoying. All right, number two goes to heat. And though many modern motorcycles get hot, vintage motorcycles always use air-cooled engines that not only heat up your legs, they can actually overheat in traffic. Seriously, if you are going to be consistently in any kind of traffic, don't get an old motorcycle unless you can lane split, unless you can lane split where you live because you and your motorcycle will absolutely fry. Old bikes get hot, there's no way around it, and modern liquid cooled bikes do as well, but not near as much. All right, last on my list is just general service from finding people who can work on your bike to actually getting the parts you need. It's certainly a lot simpler on a modern motorcycle. Most dealerships won't work on old bikes. So you're gonna have to find someone who does that specifically where you live, or you're gonna have to basically become somewhat of a mechanic. There's certainly a market for it. So depending on where you're at, there's usually a mechanic out there who will work on your old bike. And the same is true for parts. There is a market for it. So for the most part, you should be able to get what you need. But if you end up with some obscure like Italian motorcycle from the 60s, you may have a hard time finding the parts that you need, or they might cost you an arm and a leg. In the end, on this note, it's best to be willing to learn stuff with your bike. It's best to just buy the part you need and watch videos, read your manual, and learn how to fix your own bike. This can be one of the best things about owning an old motorcycle, so for me this is a plus. But I will say a lot of people think they want to tinker or even just use the word tinker and I don't know, I don't really like that because there's no such thing as tinkering in my mind. You're either going to learn something mechanical or become somewhat of a mechanic or you're not. There's no such thing as like just grabbing a wrench. You have to watch videos, you have to read books, you have to learn how your motorcycle works if you're going to literally do anything. So I think it's better to phrase it that way. Do you want to become a mechanic or at least, you know, somewhat of a mechanic? If not, you might not want to get an old bike. 
All right, those are my 10 things that you should think about before getting a vintage motorcycle, or you could say 10 reasons you shouldn't get a vintage motorcycle. Owning a bike like this is amazing. I love it, but it works for me because it works for me, and not everybody uses their motorcycle the same way that I do. So give it a lot of thought. Seriously, check out my video on why you should get a vintage motorcycle because there are some good reasons as well. And again, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and comment below to be entered into our giveaway to get $50 towards any merchandise or apparel from whichever motorcycle manufacturer you choose. So enter now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, ride safe.